when I first started in Congress, uh, there was a uh, sort of a segregation caucus uh, made up of both Democrats and Republicans, by the way. And the battle was over whether there should be civil rights laws or laws banning uh, segregation. Congressman John Conyers had an and exceptionally long congressional career very, very lived in two clean. parts. Born in 1929 in Highland Park, John Conyers attended Northwestern High School, then Wayne State Law, and while there, took a job working for Congressman John Dingell, one of a handful of men who served in Congress longer than he did. Conyers' first election win came in 1964, and he took the oath of office in 1965 during enormous political change. Early on, Conyers quickly found himself in the middle of the civil rights movement. He befriended Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Rosa Parks helped found the Congressional Black Caucus, something famed New York African-American Congressman Adam Clayton Powell wasn't all that enthused about at the time. He looked at us, he said, what for? He said, I represent black people in America. You don't need a caucus. <laughs> we were dumbfounded. Conyers introduced the 1965 Voting Rights Act and told of his great relationship with President Lyndon Johnson. His conscience, uh, I think, kicked in and that he began to realize the inevitability of, uh, of the president and the Congress doing the right thing and moving race relations forward. Conyers had the opposite relationship with President Richard Nixon, We're introducing here. the impeachment resolution. To the coincidental meeting of this consideration of war powers has arrived at the same time that the revelations of Watergate make this vote inescapable upon us. President Nixon resigned before they could take that vote. Later, Conyers succeeded in getting a national holiday for Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday through Congress, which he believes was his crowning achievement. Still, Conyers suffered his share of defeats. For instance, he wrote of how he tried to stop the violence during the 1967 12th Street riot in Detroit and was shouted down and told to go home for his own safety. He ran for Detroit mayor against another Detroit political legend, Mayor Coleman Young, twice and lost. As he moved into the latter years of his career, he found more controversy than not. In 1990, 61-year-old John Conyers married 25-year-old Monica Conyers. In 2005, Detroiters elected Monica to a city council seat, and one embarrassing headline after another emerged with Monica sparring and name-calling all the way to federal prison. I'm the first one to council call member. you Shrek. Shrek. She spent three years in Camp Cupcake for taking bribes in the infamous Sinegro sludge scandal. The congressman did his level best to avoid Monica's problem. I am not talking about that. I've never talked about it. And I'm not now. The public would like the public would like to know what's on your mind, sir. Come on. Well, I'd be happy to talk to you. That's why I'm asking you right now. Yeah. Come on with me. Later, Monica filed for divorce, and then just as the final divorce hearing came, they renewed their vows and didn't split. Also, during this time, Conyers nearly didn't get reelected when his staff didn't get sufficient signatures to get on the 2014 ballot. A legal fight reinstated him on the ballot, and he won re-election. In the end, though, retirement was never an option. I don't have any, any uh, designs uh, to hang it up or, or uh, look through the books of what used to be and what, what I did.